Hi there, Lindsay here. Today we're gonna draw a lemon because when life gives you lemons, we paint them, right? Or make lemonade or something positive. I was just kind of, this morning I was like, oh man, we got construction workers here. There's loud noises. How am I ever gonna get a tutorial, a tutorial filmed? And I was gonna do it last night, but with the kids home and as you know, I work in the basement and nothing, nothing fancy. I'm just drawing this kind of oval shape here. Uh, it's kind of noisy if we've got people you know, taking showers and whatnot, because, you know, the furnace and the water pump and all that stuff that goes with your, your, your everyday life. But then I thought, you know what? Everybody's got that. Everybody's got different things that they've got to work around in their life to make time for art. So I'm no different. So let's just, let's just do it. Let's draw a lemon and let's paint one. Let's make lemonade. I'm going to be using some, a very simple set of watercolors. These are from Lucas from jerrysartorama.com. A very um, simple set of 12 colors, very affordable. So if you're looking for something to get started with this or the Lucas Studio, which is even cheaper, I recommend the Lucas Studio for kids because you don't have to worry about any, um, any chemicals. There goes a furnace. I apologize for any noises, but I'm doing my best. And that's what you should do too. Do your best. Don't compare. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing, what anybody else has. Um, and just do your thing. Let's draw a little leaf over here, shall we? Okay. Let's put one right up there. Oh, that's pretty. The reference photo is from Unsplash by Emily Sandberg, and I'm going to link that down below. Jerry's Artorama is our sponsor today. They uh, have some very affordable art supplies, and they carry all the major brands as well. Uh, and I'll put a coupon code in the video description. If an item is not on sale, you can use a coupon on it, which saves you a little bit more. Right, let's just kind of get that little stem back there. Okay, now I've drawn this darker than you're gonna want to because I wanna make sure you can see it. Now, there's gonna be a pretty strong shadow here and I love to see the play of light and shadow. This leaf has a little turn and I love when leaves have little turns in them, it just makes them look a little more interesting. And let's put a couple little water drops on here. There is kind of like a little bit of a water drop on there, but you can barely see it. So I'm, honestly, I am accentuating it because I like water drops and things look good in three. So I'm going to add myself a little extra one right up there too. All right. So for the shadow, let's draw kind of like a double line here and we're just going to get that shape. We're going to draw it up again. Draw, I'm drawing it darker than you want to. You don't even have to draw it if you don't want to. You could totally just, um, you know, just paint it in when the time comes. Let's see, we got the little stem coming out here. And this is interesting because you're seeing the leaf at a different angle. The shadow, the light's coming through and casting a shadow that's not exactly the way we're seeing the leaf, uh, which I think adds a little bit of an interesting design element. So we're going to put that in there. By the way, if you need more help learning how to paint, I have a class, Essential Tools and Techniques for Watercolor. It is a basic class, takes you from soup to nuts, how to learn how to paint so you don't waste time on the wrong things. It's probably the quickest way to get up to speed painting if that's something you're interested in. All right, there's our lemon all sketched. Now we are going to grab our brushes. I'm gonna be using the Mimic from Jerry's Artorama that you can buy in a value set or you can get individually. It just depends on how many brushes you want. Um, they have two value sets. The smaller one does not include these big guys here, uh, but uh, I think it doesn't include this one and this one. I like those brushes, but I paint larger sometimes. If you're not painting larger, get the, get the cheaper set. You're going to be fine. If you do paint larger, um, then go with the bigger one. All right, I'm going to start by doing a unifying wash, and I am going to do that in like a lemon yellow color. I'm going to wet everything except for the shadow here. Now this is kind of a practice piece. If you have any hairy lines on the outside, don't worry. As long as you don't paint over them, you can just erase them after your paintings all dry. I'm just gonna give this a nice even layer of water. You want to not get puddles. Now keep in mind, your paint's only gonna travel where the paper is wet. So you don't have to worry. Just kind of wet the paper, wet over the leaves and the um, the fruit. This would be really pretty on a greeting card. So if you have some of those watercolor greeting cards, that would be good uh, a good thing to practice on. I like those because it kind of takes a lot of the fear away when you're painting because you're like, oh, it's just a greeting card. I'm gonna send it away, or you could 
paint on a postcard. You can chop down your watercolor paper to postcard size. And if you're concerned that your postcards might get wet before they get to their um, recipients, what I usually like to do is just kind of rub it with a, a hunk of wax. And then, um, and then I just, uh, I just heat it with a hairdryer and it kind of melts it and it seals it really well. All right, I'm taking lemon yellow. I'm just gonna do, look at that. I didn't pre-wet this and I haven't used this palette in quite a while because I have a larger palette of the Lucas watercolors. I'll just tip that there so it's not too glary for you. And, um, but they re-wet really, really well. So it's, it's a really nice intro to a professional art paint without a huge price tag. I think this one, I haven't looked at the price on this set in a while, but I'm thinking it's around $35, so it's not crazy. And you can get individual pans to refill, or you can buy the paint in the tubes and refill it that way. Completely up to you. I find that the tube paint is generally more economical for, you know, what you get, but um, but both are available. I think it's because the pans cost more money, like the little plastic pans cost more money than the tubes do as far as like on the manufacturing side. So I think that's why they're a little bit more expensive. But when you got the pans, eh, refill it from tubes, it works just fine. And if you if you finish up, if I, I like the Lucas brand of paints, but I actually prefer the Turner line of paints for an affordable watercolor. So you can always refill it with the Turners. It's up to you. They're both good. They both have just have a different, like I feel like the Lucas is a little bit more of a traditional watercolor. All right, so now I wanna go ahead while I'm at it and get some shading. And uh, I'm gonna clean my brush. Now I have two jars of water. I wash my brush in the big jar and I get fresh water in the little jar. That's how I can remember what's clean and dirty. I'm gonna take, uh, let's see, I think I'll use this, um, this cyan blue. I'm going to take a little bit of the magenta, make myself a purple, and that's going to be the opposite of yellow. So that's going to be a good shadow color for me. And we're going to add that. I'm going to add a little bit on this side. And look how it kind of grays and neutralizes. Look at that. How easy is that? And I'm going to add a little bit over here because we've got a fairly front um front slightly to the left lighting here so we're gonna have we're gonna have some shadow under this leaf and we're gonna have some shadow under the stem and along this edge i like to mix my own shadow colors because i know i'm going to get something that's going to harmonize and um I can really control the way it looks. You do have to be aware when you're doing like complementary color shading on something like a fruit or a flower that you don't make it look like uh, spoiled or dead or like, you know, past its prime. But if you're gentle, you can really do a good job. Now I'm, I'm sculpting, give me a little bit of, of, uh, of shape to my lemon just by my brush strokes here. Now my brush is not sopping wet. It's, it's drier than the, than the paint on than the paper, so I'm not going to get back runs. I'm not going to do that shadow yet because I don't want to get a back run. And I can always layer more shadow later if I need it. Now let's go ahead, actually, yeah, let's mix uh, some green for our leaf. I'm going to go in with my lemon yellow. Make myself a nice little puddle of it there. Rinse off my brush. I'm gonna grab some of that cyan blue. And you could use phthalo blue, use whatever your cool blue is. And look at that beautiful bright green we're getting there. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. And I'm gonna add, uh, I can add magenta to it, but I think I want a little bit of an earthier color. So I'm gonna go with um, this kind of warm brown color. Ooh, that's a little bit too much. That's all right, that's perfect for the stem. Let's get a little bit of that in the stem while we're at it. Just a little bit. I don't wanna bring it into the lemon yet because it would bleed. Let's take some of that color over here and we'll mix up some actual green. There we go, we're getting there. I don't like the green that comes in the set. I don't, well, the, the, the uh, bright green, the phthalo green is fine, 
about that chrome oxide green. Chrome oxide green is my least favorite color, by the way. I've done a whole video about it, about, about using it, even though it's my, my least favorite color. A little bit more blue. Actually, what we're going to get is going to be very similar to a chrome oxide green. But I want it on my terms. My terms. All right, I'm just going to blast this with my drying tool real quick because I don't want to have any weird back runs. And this will only take a second. Things dry, typically dry pretty quick in the winter if you have heat on. Being in my basement, though, it's kind of cool and damp, so um, I'm going to help it along with this little heater here. I should do the trick. I'm just going to brush off. I get a little bit of fuzz there, probably because my cat likes hanging out, especially with the uh, with all the construction going on. Cat likes to hang out here. And I'm going to go ahead and glaze over a layer with this green right on top of the leaf. I'm going to do that for both of the leaves. And I want a little bit of a, uh, a ruffled edge there, so I'm just going to give it a little jiggle as I do that. I'm going to go right over the water droplets too. Now because it's a small area, I don't need to pre-wet. I can paint it quick enough so I'm not going to get a, a streak or a dry edge. I just want a little bit of a jiggly edge there just so it's got that little bit of, there's not a ton of serration on the edge of the lemon leaf, but there is a little bit. And I'm going to go up here and do the same thing. I'm actually going to go ahead and add a little bit of this green to the stem. while I'm at it and give this guy a coat of that green as well. I think if you don't have a lot of time, choose something kind of simple and then, then if you end up with a little bit more time than you anticipated, go ahead and try to push it a little bit farther, make it, as, make it a little bit more detailed. That way you're going to have something painted and you might even have a chance to get more done. Okay, now I can also go in and get the shadow at this point, and the shadow in my reference photo is quite blue, but I think it has more to do with like kind of the lighting in the background, and since I'm going to be right on white and I'm not going to be on this kind of light blue color, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start off with a kind of like a magenta color, a magenta and a blue, and get kind of like a purple, because I think the purple will really um, showcase the lemon a little bit better than to have blue because they're opposites. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh water to that, thin it down. I think that would work really nice. There's just, there was just an, enough uh, <coughs> green in my brush to just make it not like a really vibrant color. And I think that's going to work really well. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in my shadow color on the background. I think actually because I'm underground and I'm on the opposite end of the house where the construction's going on, it's not really that loud. I wish the dog would come down to my studio with me because she's kind of like in my daughter's closet quaking at the moment. She doesn't want... I've tried to comfort her, but she doesn't seem to seem to care. And then I, I heard that you really shouldn't like fuss over them when they're scared like that or you just encourage them being scared. I don't know. I just don't know. I'm going to take her for a walk in a little bit, hopefully with one of her dog friends, and then she can feel with a little bit of stress relief, and then maybe she can nap. There we go. I like that. Oh, that's soft and pretty and nice. Okay, so let's warm up a little bit of the yellow to add on to our lemon. Oh, you know what? Let's add a little bit of yellow to that brown that we made. That brownish green. And let's add that to the stem. It's kind of making us a yellow ochre color. And yes, we could just use the use the yellow ochre, but uh, hey, we can mix it. Mix it. It's good practice, and your painting will look better. It will look more professional. Okay. I like to wipe my brush off, get those uh, get those little droplets of water off the handle, so I don't end up with um, so I don't end up with them sliding down and getting on my paint and giving me grief. Okay, so let's take some of the yellow on its own. 
that a smidgen of magenta. Come on, magenta. There we go. That's just giving us a warmer yellow. Those colors are very transparent, so they they warm each other up really well. And then I'm just going to go over with another layer here. Going right over the shadow. I'm going to go over this shadow as well. And I'm just going to kind of work until I run out of paint. And as I'm bringing it out, I'm just kind of stippling, kind of like tapping. So I'll end up with some of that like kind of a white highlight. Except it's not really white. It's actually the color that we base coated it in. But it's going to give us that pocky uh, texture. Okay, now we're going to reload. Actually, I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to get a little bit more paint because I want to make sure I have a full brush load. I don't want to really... Oh, wait. I was using the magenta. There we go. That's fine. But it doesn't really matter because I've used all these colors everywhere. Anyway. And now I'm just tapping out as I get away from the shadow edge. And it's going to give us a um, that texture. I'm not going for photorealism, obviously. I'm just kind of going for a little bit of, of modeling. I'm going to grab a little bit of that brown. I'm going to blot, my, blot the excess off my brush. I'm going to add a little bit of that in there. I see a little bit of a flaws in the skin, but I think that is nice. It adds a little bit of interest. On the tip of the brush, and just kind of tap it here and there. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that in the shadow because the shadow is too light. And see if I need to add any of this anywhere else. We shouldn't get blossoms because we've been working pretty much on a dry surface, so there shouldn't be nothing, there shouldn't be anything that's going to interact negatively there. And I'm tapping in the shadow here at this point because I want to increase that texture. Just a little bit on the edge there. Okay. Hey, it's coming along. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to go in with a little bit of a smaller brush. Let's do a number four round. And let's make a little bit darker of a green here. Add a little bit of magenta into that to darken it. And these colors mix really well. Okay, and let's add a little bit of... A little dark now. Let's see. We've got the light coming in through here. This side, ironically, because of refraction, this side of the dewdrop will be a little bit darker. As the light gets caught in the bubble of the drop on the other side. And then the shadow will be on the opposite side of each of the dewdrops. So I'm just sketching that in right now. And then I'm just kind of spreading out my green because I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. Just a, This is just a fun sketch. All right, now up here we've got... I'll have to wipe off that pan when I'm done. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. We've got a fairly dark area under the turn of this leaf, so let's get that in. It's a little bit darker in there. Oh, 
I'm just kind of dry brushing. I'm just doing almost like how I would shade if I was using a pencil. brighter green to add into some of the areas. I didn't bother taping my paper down. Totally can though. A little bit of brighter green up here. Okay, I feel like I want a little bit darker value, but I think I might do that with um with some pencils just to kind of enliven my design a little bit i like to use the prismacolor pencils but you can use whatever you like it doesn't really matter it's going to be such a a small little um alteration that we're going to do so you can use whatever you like and here's a tip if your paper curls if you haven't taped it down flip it over and heat it from the back side and that will see how it's flattening out the paper it really helps i'm not i think it just kind of like um seems to remove the tension in the paper a little bit and i'm going to grab a few colors i'm going to grab a nice bright lemon yellow or fluorescent yellow anything that's really nice and punchy like that i'm going to grab a white because i always seem to need the white you can see why it's shorter i have so many little nubbin short white pencils <laughs> it's not even funny i really like to have an indigo that's another one I use a lot, so I've got that. It's got sh it's pretty short there, and you know I really think that's probably about all that I need. Um, I will spare you the the loud sharpening, and I'll just use my little handle sharpener here just to point my pencils a bit. But I will tell you, using a electric sharpener with your colored pencils does really help. Now I'm going to hit the highlight here, just get the brighter edge with my white pencil. I'm going to do it on each of these little dew drops. And then I'm going to put a, a high highlight on the top most rounded edge. And I like to get these brighter ones in first just because it helps really bring them out and helps them, uh, helps them add to the brightness. This might be even a little brighter than I need, but I'm just going to kind of hit my highlight with this really, really bright yellow pencil. And actually, doing a technique like this, if you were doing it on a postcard, you are protecting those watercolor layers underneath. But it is a fluorescent color pencil, so it isn't really as light fast as other, as other colors, so keep that in mind. I'm going to also add in a little bit of the, into the brighter areas of the leaves. Just, I'm barely pressing. I'm just like very, very, very very light. Your fluorescent colors are not that opaque, so they're really not going to show up that much. But if you put it like over the white in the uh, the long highlight, where it's more like where the light's being captured, that will that will look real good. It'll go over the white, and you'll see it. And you can color a little firm, more firmly in the dewdrop where it's magnifying the light, and that can be a really nice effect there. So I'm looking for the lighter areas where I've got some reflection and I am coloring a little bit firmly. You shouldn't be like coloring so firmly that you are hurting yourself. You shouldn't be feeling, no, there is a little bit of a cast reflection here I want to get. It's bouncing off the wall uh, onto the fruit. If you are hurting yourself, if your hands hurt, if you have arthritis, don't do this. You should not, you shouldn't be coloring that firmly anyway. Um, and these pencils are nice and soft, so you really shouldn't, it, no, it probably looks like I'm straining, but, um, this is a small pencil. I got to kind of hold it down here because it's, it's gotten short and I'm getting this little slice of highlight here because you've got this cast reflection. The light is coming through that way, hitting the wall, bouncing back. So even though we have a shadow on the side, the wall is actually throwing some light back onto the lemon. And that's going to be right up against the dark shadow, which helps make it look a little three-dimensional. Now, I'm doing a little scumbly stroke, which means I'm kind of just scribbling. That's a fancy word for scribbling. And that's going to help me get some of that texture in there. Okay, I like that. Now, I could go in with a little bit of, of, uh, of greens and stuff, but I'm just going to stick to these, these colors right here for a minute and see if I actually need anything else. Indigo is such a lovely shadow color because it's so gentle. 
and it usually looks good with stuff. I'm going either side of that center vein of the leaf. I'm not putting a ton of detail in here, so I'm not going to start adding the veins in because then you start adding details somewhere, then you've got to do it everywhere. And um, I just, you know, I don't, that's not, that's not what this painting is going to be for me. I'm going to turn this so I can reach a little bit more comfortably. Always, uh, always do that. Always make sure that you are comfortable. I was working on, I was prepping for a video yesterday and I had to swatch out a bunch of markers and by the time I was done the area between my shoulder blades was so sore and tight just because I've been like kind of like hunched over my desk it's like what would the, what would I tell my students I would say don't sit like that get up and stretch make sure you're comfortable <laughs> I'm like you know I'm my own worst student here um so just kind of keep that in mind I want to just grab that shadow I got a little dark there so I'm just going to feather it out Actually, I think it's the paint underneath, but now I've sealed it underneath the pencil, so i got to be careful. I'm going to give that a little point. You don't have to do a lot to really get some depth here. Just a little bit of shading. Value is king. That means, you know, get you. don't worry about colors. Getting the right color as much as worry about getting the right value. This should be a little bit darker, this edge up here. And you could even go in onto the lemon with this indigo and give it a little bit uh, more shading. Just go real light. You can always add more on top. You can layer. If you go in real heavy, you can't layer. You're going to clog that paper up and it's going to be all all slick and shiny. And you're going to flatten the tooth down. But if you go, if you go uh, slow, then you can layer it up. I'm going to hit that edge right there save those those firm marks for when you are uh when you are done well there you have it i'm pretty happy with this let me get those crumbs off of there for you hey you got a half an hour paint something you got 10 minutes paint something uh, adjust your expectations to the time you have and make the most of your day life gives you lemons paint them thank you so much for watching if you want to find the supplies i use they'll be linked down below to our sponsor jerry'sartorama.com along with a coupon code so you can save a little more money please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed these little skill builder videos uh so i'll know to make more of them thank you so much for watching i appreciate it and i appreciate you till next time happy crafting